Hey, I'm here to give you an update on Zencash software development progress. This is Rolf, uh, also known as Block Ops, if you see me on the Zencash Slack channel. And first of all, I wanted to start big picture, and we get a, a lot of different questions. We have a lot of different people that are involved with Zencash, and everybody has kind of their own vision on what they see as, as part of Zencash. And I'm fortunate and that I get to see a lot of different parts of it happening at once and can help to explain what's going on to everybody so at least we have a high level um, feeling about what's going on. So with software development there's a lot of different things that happen and we're fortunate that when we launched we started out with a good core set of capabilities and as time goes on we're improving and adding more and more capabilities. So there's lots of great milestones that happen as we progress. And we certainly want to celebrate those milestones because they're important and they add to the capability and they also give us the, um, the enjoyable experience of working together to accomplish something. So in this update, I'm gonna um, talk about a few different areas of the software development. We've got what I consider four main software development paths going on at, at once. So one is the Zen node software. That's uh, what all the nodes and wallets and mining pools run. It's what uh, takes the different transactions and puts them on the blockchain and really uh, keeps all sorts of different things running. And this is what we got from uh, Bitcoin and from Zcash. That's really the core of our uh, Zen node software. We got client applications. Most common client application is a wallet, and we've got now a few different wallets, and I'm going to talk through those and where they're at and the improvements that we've seen in them recently. Secure node system. So one of the things that we think is important at Zencash is the ability to have secure nodes, which is not only uh, nodes that are reliable and use encrypted transport, but also um, have the ability to do additional things. So I'm going to talk about where the um, secure node system, specifically the tracking and payment system is in the development cycle in just a little bit. And integrations. So our software developments also work on integrations. Integrations with multi-coin wallets, with exchanges, uh, with uh, payment gateways and things like that. So I've got some updates on that and as well as some of the things that we're working on. Sometimes people ask me in the Slack, they say, hey, I'm a developer, how can I contribute? I'd like to help, I'd like to do things with, with Zencash. And there's a lot of different ways that people can contribute. The first one that I would suggest is join the Slack, uh, join the developer channel, join the secure node channel, join, join the wallet channel and see what, what's going on and become familiar with our, our basic software. And then based upon that, you can see that there might be other things that need doing or, or other things that, that can be done. And if you're familiar with other cryptocurrencies, maybe they've done things that we haven't done, think, done in, in Zen Cash yet or based upon the capabilities that we have. Um, maybe there's uh, other, uh, other software development that you can do to help. So I encourage anybody who wants to participate to do that. And if by starting out with that process, you then see that there's something that you think that we could use as a project in our Zencash forum, you can certainly go there and make a proposal. We've got proposal templates, and I encourage you to do this uh, for specific things to accomplish. We've had some folks uh, do that, like Kendrick Tan, and we've got some surprisingly neat stuff going on. An update on the Zen node software. This is a big deal. Um, in fact, we incre incremented the version to version two for this. We have TLS, transport layer security, in the master branch. So the big feature is that in all other cryptocurrencies, as far as I know, the transactions that are sent from a user's wallet to a node, which is then propagated out amongst all the other nodes and things like that, all this information is sent unencrypted. Now the addresses themselves and the transactions themselves are encrypted, so you can't see what's actually in them in most other cryptocurrencies. But now, with Zen Cash, by default, this information is encrypted, just like by having the lock browser, the lock icon in your browser. You'd never enter your social security number or credit card data or anything unless that lock icon 
is in your browser, well, it does the same thing. And it uses the same function. So it uses a certificate authority certification to cryptographically encrypt the transport information, the transaction information from your wallet uh, to the node. So that's part of keeping information private. So people can see, all they can see is where you're going from, where you're going to, but that you're sending encrypted data. Just like when you're accessing a website over a, a TLS encrypted, nobody can see what, what the actual contents of the transport are. So that's pretty important. And upgrade your nodes. It's backwards compatible, so there's no hard fork, there's no soft fork. As you can go as you go through and upgrade your nodes, more and more of the um, Zen Cache nodes will be using encrypted transport. At some point in the future, we may enforce that uh, nodes use it, but again, this is a reason why we use secure nodes, because all secure nodes, in order to be secure nodes, have to have a certificate authority certification and be using it for their Zencash network transport. So this is pretty important, this is great, and um, it, it, it's a big deal. As a quick review, a big part of the mission of Zencash is to have a system that securely and reliably enables public, private, and anonymous transactions, messaging, and publishing. So let's break that down a little bit and how we enable this. So first off, we have the ability to do transactions, so sending Zencash from one client to another using the regular blockchain that's public for everybody to see. That's just like Bitcoin. So we have the ability to do public. So sometimes I may have the need to say, well, I'm going to send you some Zen Cash and payment for your services, and here it is on the blockchain. Everybody can see it. Um, people might not know that it's you and me, but they could probably figure it out using metadata or other stuff like that. Uh, so that's the ability to do public stuff. Sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes you want to have the ability to do transactions uh, just between two people or only the people that are involved in the transactions know who's involved. So that's private. And the way we do that with Zen Cash is using the ZK Snarks. So transactions that are using the ZK Snark technology that was developed by Zcash. Fabulous technology. So only the people that are involved in the transaction know that it happened. It's published on the blockchain, but the amount um, and who sent it and who received it, the, the addresses are not published on the blockchain. The next thing is being able to do anonymous transactions. So being able to send it, so I know that I'm sending it to somebody else, but they don't know who it came from. So there's a difference between private and anonymous. And as we go into using messaging, which is available right now, you'll see how that, that breaks out. So in our messaging interface, which is available in the Swing Wallet right now on Windows and Linux, and I think um, later today we'll publish the Mac version, and these are all using the version 2 of with the TLS encryption uh, of the Zen node, we have the ability to do both uh, public and, uh, well, sorry, we only have the ability to do private messaging. The ability to do anonymous messaging is also there. Um, so if you have some a Z address, a shielded address from somebody else, you can send them a message. So for example, I could post a shielded address on my website and say, send me a message. And somebody can send me a message and I'll have no idea who it is. So that's an anonymous message. That capability exists right now. If you don't send me your information, then I don't know who it is that sent me the message. If we want to have two-way communication, private uh, communications, uh, private messaging, then I need to know who you are. You need to send me that, that information. So that capability exists right now with Zen Cash. So not so we're accomplishing our mission. Remember the first graph I said about the path to success? We start somewhere and then we gain more capabilities. Well, that's what we're doing right now. And the publishing will be coming later. Uh, we're going to be using our clients to be able to publish uh, publicly, privately, anonymously to the interplanetary file system, IPFS. Uh, it's, not, it's not there yet, but again, that's, that's part of our path to success. 
We have the Arizon wallet under development, which is great. Love having lots of different wallets. We have a mobile wallet that's in beta right now. You can download it and use it on your Android phone. I've done that. Um, hardware wallet, we have software developers that are working with Ledger to, um, to create the Zencash application for Ledger. Web wallet, that's in place now. That's using Java that uh, Kendrick Tan developed. And uh, I got mobile wallet on here twice. Anyway, uh, what I meant to write here was the Zen Chat. So that's a different application that uses the similar technology to the messaging because when uh, Ivan Backlinov uh, developed the messaging part of the, of the Swing Wallet, he had to create a messaging protocol. That messaging protocol is on our GitHub. And so other people are able to use that messaging pro protocol to create other messaging applications. And I'm sure we'll do the same thing with publishing in the future. So this is very exciting because the client applications are what enable people to actually use Zen Cash. Oh yeah, I meant to show you the Zen wallet on my Android phone right here. It's up and running. Secure nodes are going through a software development process. We are, for the capabilities that we need for the secure nodes, we're not integrating that capability for the tracking and payments directly into the Zen node software. We're doing this as a companion client software that runs on each node, as well as on a head-end server system so that we can uh, issue challenges to each of the nodes that are subscribing to the secure node uh, system and track responses and measure uptime and also process payments to the people that are running secure nodes. When we started out, the software development uh, that Alan is project management and doing a lot of the uh, development for it he started developing on his PC so it took many of his took his years of uh, experience figured out how to apply that to the Zen cash uh, system and started developing the tracking and payment system on his PC when he was ready uh, we started our alpha testing now he takes his software development software puts it on a, a VPS and gets people to download his software, run it on Zen nodes that are operating in testnet mode. When you hear the terms testnet and mainnet, uh, the, the actual operating uh, system where it uses real Zen cache and people trade on exchanges, that's the mainnet. We also have a testnet mode where we can test everything first before we put it into mainnet. That's what we have been doing all along on all the improvements to the Zen node software is the developers uh, write the, the improvements and put them into a development path. Uh, a lot of the community folks and our developers download those uh, and compile it and run it on testnet and find problems and issues and then those get taken care of. And when it's running solid in testnet and people have tested it in all sorts of different ways, then we put it over in main, um, into production on mainnet. And that's what we're doing with the secure node software as well. So alpha is great. That's the stage we're in right now. And the software is pretty much ready to go to beta. So we're standing up the reliable system that we need. Now, a typical, if you're running a web server for your own blog or something like that, great. Run a VPS, plug it in, set it up, boom, you're off and running. For enterprise level software, which I consider Zen Cash, you need to do things in a time proven and reliable fashion. It's great that we have some really good. Uh, IT sysadmins uh, with our crew. So here, let me give you an example of what a, a typical production environment would look like, which may or may not be similar to what we're going to be doing with Zen Cash. So, if you have a, a client, uh, like the uh, tracking node client, it comes through the internet, and in a lot of cases it goes through a proxy like Cloudflare, um, and that's done to prevent denial of service attacks. Denial of service attacks is where someone impersonates a client and sends a lot of traffic in an attempt to overwhelm the system. We don't want to have that happen. Um, this is kind of like the public side. And through that proxy, it goes to multiple web servers. Um, there isn't just one web server that an enter enterprise a web system has. There's multiple web servers. And those connect on the private side uh, to backend database servers. And in some cases, these databases uh, get in their, uh, a subscriber off a publisher database uh, from the back end 
uh, or they operate in a clustered fashion where they all uh, main, they all keep each other up to date on what information is on the database. And then, of course, we run backups so that if there is an issue with uh, any of the servers or systems or things like that, that we can uh, restore information from backups. So this is what I mean by a reliable system. Taking an application that's running on a single server and splitting it up into different servers with clustering takes a little bit of work, and that's why we have people with different skill capabilities that are coming to together to build the Zencash uh, secure node tracking system and test it. So once we have this system in place, we're going to move over the testnet testing that's being done on alpha to beta. So we're going to operate on this system in testnet to make sure everything's working well on this new system for the changes that we've made going from a single server to a reliable enterprise system. Once that's done, then we'll change over to the main net from testnet. We won't enable payments, We're not, and, and this will just make sure that everybody's able to transition over and operate on the main net just in case there's any differences. And we'll run that for a little while, and when we see that that's working well, then we're going to enable payments. And as you recall, that's 3.5% uh, of the mining reward gets paid out to the uh, people that are running secure nodes. Um, and that run them reliably. And briefly, for a secure node, uh, you need to have 42 Zen Cash in your own wallet on your computer. Uh, you need to have a system that's running the secure node, has to have a certificate, and run the latest Zen Node software, and have enough processor and memory to be able to do a shielded transaction within a reasonable period of time. Uh, there's more details that, that, are, that are published, but that's the, that's the big picture. So that's where we are on secure nodes. We're proceeding down the path to success. I'm very happy with the progress that we've made so far. The fourth part of the software development is the integrations. We have integrations with different exchanges and multi-coin wallets, hardware wallets, and coin payment. Uh, and these all require assistance from one of our developers in order to make the Zen Cash integration work well. Um, Although we have, you know, everything's documented well and it's similar to Bitcoin and Zcash, there are some special things that we need to make sure happen so that everything works well. And what we have so far, of course, we started out with Bitrex, great partner of ours. We've added uh, Cost.io as an exchange, which they added the uh, Ethereum trading pair. Cryptopia added a Litecoin trading pair, as well as I think a Dogecoin trading pair. Evercoin is an anonymous exchange, which is great. You don't have to sign up, log in. You can just go there. And we're on the main page of, of Evercoin, along with probably 10 other uh, cryptocurrencies, and on Yobit, which gives us access to a whole different market. Wallets. We've had the Coinomi integration working for a time. It's not complete yet. Um, we have had some work between our, our developers, so I'm actually not really sure where the Coinomi integration is at this point. I keep expecting to see it in the latest Android update, and hopefully that'll be soon. Ledger, we're, we've been actively working. Uh, Jake, one of our developers, has been working with the Ledger team for, I think, about a month now just to get the um, Zencash uh, Ledger application in there. And we are on coinpayments.net, so if you have any uh, desire to purchase uh, a product at one of your vendors that uses coinpayments.net, ask them to accept Zen Cash. Uh, there's already some out there. And Cost.io is also a payment gateway. So we are actively working to add more exchanges, more integrations on uh, multi coin wallets and hardware wallets, and more payment gateways. These really help for, from a transaction standpoint. So those are the four major things that we're working on from a software development standpoint. We are making continual progress. Uh, it's, um, it's fun to be continuing to improve and get more and more capabilities and have a roadmap and be executing on it. So we've got a great team. And this is a lot of fun to do. And I'm happy to be able to do my part to help explain everything that our talented developers are doing to make Zencash better and better every day. Thanks.